With Intel releasing new CPUs, I actually had my mind set on getting an 11900K in order to do some testing, but when I started seeing the numbers and benchmarks and reality set in, I had to absolutely cancel any idea that I had about getting this CPU, and this is what I got instead, and I'm going to tell you what the current state of Intel is. Let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Remember to subscribe and smash that like button. Some say that every time you do, Intel gets a little bit closer to making a little bit more sense. And I'm actually serious about this. Even Gamers Nexus had no idea what's going on with the 11900K. Certainly it seems to be a very confusing CPU. So let's talk about Intel. So I had my mindset on the 11900K. I wanted to do a build specific to Z590. I'm gonna tell you the reason why. This is a Z590 Strix I. Now, what's really, okay, here we go. It's a little slippery. Now, what's really cool about this new architecture, of course, you have PCIe Generation 4, and you're also gonna get Thunderbolt 4. Now, the reason for a content creator, that's pretty cool, because there are so many things that are Thunderbolt with external hard drives and things of that nature, especially having a small unit like this. Now, I will say that pretty much all of my main systems, including my Threadripper system, are all pretty much AMD at this point, because let's face it, AMD pretty much has won the crown from Intel pretty handedly, even considering considering this 11th generation, I think even more so now. So having said that, I still want to test the new Intel stuff. It does have some interesting things. So instead of the 11900K, I actually picked this up. This is the 11600K at only $669. This one, I think, is actually a fairly decent deal. It doesn't seem to be too far off from the 5600X in terms of performance, and it does come in a little cheaper, and better yet, it's pretty easy to get. Even today, it's in stock pretty much everywhere. Now, when I went to Micro Center to pick up um, this, you know, 11600K, and now they will have this on Newegg and Amazon. It still seems to be available, you know, pretty widely. The 11900K was also available, and I had the decision to make do I spend almost $400 more and get the 11900K or do I save some money and go for this? Now, while the 11900K you would think should be Intel's top of the line CPU, technically it is now for the mainstream. It seems to perform almost on par and sometimes a little worse than the previous generation 10900K and Intel going down to only eight cores instead of 10 while not really giving that much more performance in terms of IPC and in terms of the gaming performance as we've seen with benchmarks really doesn't justify this processor at all and that over $600 it absolutely makes little to no sense. Now of course by this point in most places that particular CPU was sold out but we have to assume that Intel is not releasing as many of those as they are of something like this the 11600K and of course recently the CPU shortage across the world has been fairly poor so if Intel can produce enough of these they'll definitely just sell them because they're you know CPUs that are available. Now there's nothing wrong with the 11900K by itself. Certainly, it's still a pretty good performing CPU. In games, it's pretty good. It's still a pretty good 8-core CPU. May run a little bit hot, may have a little bit too high of a power draw, but when you compare it to Intel itself with the 10850K, the 10900K, even the 10 or 11700K, it really starts to make very little sense. There's not too much interest there in performance, and that's why I feel you go down a little bit. 11600K is really the sweet spot for something that's 269 that's going to come in under the 5600x it's more widely available and the performance seems to be pretty good so i think pretty much the 11th generation you either go for something 10th generation or maybe the 11600k if that's what you're looking for but of course i still think ryzen most likely is going to be the better choice something like a 5900x or even 5800x may certainly outperform in some cases the higher end intel SKUs. and i did see the 5800x on sale recently for under 400 and even though that CPU can also run a little bit hot, as I've done a little video on that previously, it's still, I think, a much better performer and value at under $400 than a $600 11900K. So while Intel's decision to release something that's really a little bit dubious and not very exciting, it only tells me that it has to be some type of a stopgap before we get to really the next generation, the 12th generation Alder Lake, which hopefully is going to have some groundbreaking technology, something that's really interesting or else i think intel may just be digging itself a deeper and deeper hole of course recently they did get a new ceo and i think this 11th generation knowing how cpus sometimes can take years to develop is something that's been in the pipeline probably way before he was
as ever CEO. So we'll have to see what 12th generation is. They really have to come with something very groundbreaking, priced well and high performing, or else AMD is just gonna be the dominant CPU maker for the foreseeable future, much like Intel was for years and years before AMD came on the scene. So to summarize, if you want one of the new Intel CPUs, 11600K is pretty much, I think, your best bet out of the lineup. That seems to be the consensus amongst everybody. Even I, after seeing the reviews and benchmarks, I could not come to buy that 11900K. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. It's way too expensive for what you're getting. Now, I will say the Z590 motherboards, they certainly seem to be pretty interesting. Asus has some of their extreme motherboards back. Even ASRock has their OC Formula motherboard, which is really cool for overclocking. I just don't think there's a CPU to take advantage of these high-end motherboards but like the motherboard that i have here the asus strix the mini itx it's actually packed with a lot of features and performance easily being able to take advantage of the 11600k not to mention having thunderbolt 4 and things like that things that are actually fairly difficult to get on the ryzen platform if you're a content creator so that's why i went with this particular setup for a small build that has a ton of features and i don't need a lot of cpu power most of the stuff for this build is going to rely on the gpu all right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of some of the Intel releases. I'm sure some of you have been following it, have been seeing how the 11900K really not well received at all. But 11600K seems to at least be a fairly decent value if you need something new and that's going to be readily available. And remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.